Hello everybody, welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict, which this time around will concentrate on Newmarket on Friday and Saturday and York. Their final couple of days were excellent days, Friday and Saturday as well uh, for them. Some tremendous racing, I don't think in The Verdict we've had six races such as the ones we're going to have a look at this time around. Six top class performers for you to assess. Let's go to Newmarket on Friday first of all. And uh, this was a, a very good card. Uh, the going, according to the times, was uh, good to soft, really. Just a little bit of ease in it. And we're going to have a look at uh, Dance Sequence, who took the Oso Sharp Stakes at 2.25. We'll have a look at uh, Al Sakib as well, a pattern horse in a handicap. And we'll look at the Phillies Mile as well, at Ilang Ilang one at 4.10. I wanted to put Matilda Picotte in. The verdict couldn't fit her in. She put up a good performance on the clock over seven furlongs. Look at that time compared to Dance Sequence, a fair bit quicker. But let's have a look at Dance Sequence uh, first of all for the Charlie Appleby team. William Buick was on board and this was the Group 3 Oso Sharp Stakes. Skellet was 7-4, to four. Uh, Sheik Columbine was 3-1. to one. Dance Sequence 4s, nibbled at in the market, gushing gold 5s and 10s and bigger the rest. The going officially soft but I think looking at those times, it was perhaps a little bit better than soft. Let's see what happened out there in the Oso oh Sharp Stakes with Dance Sequence right over on the far side there. Stall number two beats Skelet from seven and Star Music came out of stall number five. And it was Skelet and Star Music who were always prominent in this race and run down by Dance Sequence despite her greenness and, as you'll see later, her inability to handle the dip she still gets the better of Skellet and a shade cosily as well. The first thing to note is that this is not a furious gallop. Skellet's been taken up to go and join issue with Star Music on the lead and just force them along a little bit quicker. But they went pretty steadily. The finishing speed percentage, 105.9. So the winner was able to finish off 5.9% quicker in the final three furlongs and she ran the rest of the race. Indeed, every single runner was over 100% in terms of their finishing speed percentages. So they've all saved energy for the dash to the line. That's what the figures tell us. And therefore, this filly who wins from here has done remarkably well because the second and third who are ahead of her at this stage, Skelet on the outside here and Star Music there. I've got a positional advantage over her at this stage. So if she's going to win off a steady gallop from in behind there, one, she needs a bit of luck and two, she needs a good turn of foot and she really does display a tremendous few final furlongs. She quickens up really nicely. Final three furlongs, 34.83. That is going some. She really picked up through those final three furlongs. She struggled going down the hill into the dip a little bit. Look at her, she's running around a bit. Then she gets the hang of things when she hits the rising ground. And she quickened up really well. Her final three furlongs, I'll give them to you, 11.22, 11.25. That's two really quick furlongs back to back. And then a 12.36 to end the race. So what won her this race? Well, it wasn't her position. She was too far back. You want to be prominent on the Roly Mile generally. She was way too far back, but she won it because she's just got so much raw ability and she's able to quicken up. That 11.22 in the fifth and that 11.25 in the sixth, the penultimate furlong, won her the race, got her to Skellet, and then she had to knuckle down because Skellet wouldn't go away and rallied against the rail. Uh, but she's flicking her ears backwards and forwards dance sequence, and I think she's won with a little bit in hand. With that in mind, the 1,000 guineas has got to be a race that they're going to think of for her next year. I always like horses that have uh, had form on the Roly Mile before coming uh, to the guineas. Look here, she just doesn't really handle the dip and she takes a while to pick up, but uh, let's put that down to greenness because the figures tell us that she quickened pretty well through those uh, last three furlongs. Her ears going backwards and forwards, 20 to one for the 1,000 guineas. That seems like quite a big price to me because she's got a good turn of foot, she clearly handles the track, she's green and there's going to be more to come and she's got a, a lovely pedigree as well. She's by Dubawi out of a street cry mare. Um, so I think 
at 20 to 1, you could do a lot worse anti-post for the thousand guineas. She's a really nice filly. Darn sequence, the Osa Sharp winner. Our two-year-olds once again now. We've seen Darn sequence uh, pretty impressive in the Oso Sharp. That was a group three. This is the group one, Philly's Mile. Shawari was three to one. Caught you looking was four to one. See the fire was four to one and backed. Ylang Ylang was nine to two and Classical Song quite weak in the market, five to one, having been 100 to 30. And it's Ylang Ylang who wins here from stall seven for Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien. Shawari from eight was second. And in third was See the Fire from stall number two. Now, this race is an interesting one to contrast with the Oso oh Sharp Stakes. There's Ylang Ylang. There's the runner up, Shawari, who's a bit keen through the race. And there's the third, See the Fire who is always prominent. And the pace here, compared to the dance sequence race, was very, very strong. Primarily because, in my opinion, Ilang ylang has got a pacemaker. And that pacemaker is a brilliant, who goes on at a very strong gallop throughout this contest. And that's really helped Ilang ylang because she's a strong stayer at a mile. She was inconvenienced last time in the Rockfell, being held up here in that race the race that was a very tactical and she couldn't get involved from the rear of the field. They realised that, the Aidan O'Brien team, they've got a good pace for her here, courtesy of Brilliant, and she responds like a very strong stayer. Now, dance sequence finishing speed percentage was about 105, so she's quickened up really well and finished off strongly. Not the case here. It was 98.99 here. That's the contrast between the two races. Ylang Ylang, despite getting up, in the closing stages is slowing down through the final three furlongs and is particularly slow through the final furlong when she went 13.2. She was still too good for the rest of them. The pace has found them all out and she's just the strongest stayer in this race. She recorded 37.43. She's about to get a little bit of trouble there, but she still did 37.43 for the final three furlongs. The runner up, not, not dissimilar really, 37.56. But the, the significant thing is that the winner was strongest in the final furlong. The 13.2 that she did, yes, it seems slow. That's because they've had all of their energy sapped out of them early in the race. But it was still quicker than the rest. And she's going away at the line under Ryan Moore, staying on very strongly in the closing stages. Complete contrast to Dan Sequence, who cruised in behind and quickened here. This is attritional stuff, really attritional. And Ilang Ilang has just ground it out and stayed on too strongly for Shawari and indeed the third horse that I see the fire who ran pretty well for the Andrew Balding team because that filly was always up with the pace but look at her hanging there hanging across towards Shawari that's because she's getting tired that furious gallop has sapped her of energy and Ylang Ylang stays on best of all now looking at this performance you'd have to suggest that she's more of an Oaks filly than a Guineas filly um, she's a 12 to 1 shot there or thereabouts for the 2024 Oaks. You wouldn't be surprised if they had a go at the Guineas. Um, she certainly sees a mile out, no problem at all, but I think she's going to be seen to be best to best effect. Over further, Ryan Moore, when interviewed afterwards, said mile and a quarter. He wouldn't really commit on a mile and a half, but you'd think she'd stay a mile and a half in the future. Um, she's really got this mile uh, very well indeed. And I think they know they've got a stare on the hands. That's why they had Brilliant in the race, forcing that really strong gallop to suit uh, this filly, who uh, we're going to see quite a lot of, I think. I think we probably will see her in the Guineas, and then it'll be all roads leading to Epsom uh, for the Oaks. And I think she could be a good filly for that race. That could really suit her. She's pretty well balanced, and she stays very strongly. And she's a Group 1 winner now. Well, we're now going to have a look at the old Rowley Cup handicap at Newmarket on Friday. And I think this is one of the best time performances in a handicap that we have seen this season. And it was put up by Al Sakib, who went off favourite at 100 to 30. But weak enough in the market. Westerton was the one for money, 7 to 2 from 11 to 2. Humanity on the back of an impressive success at Kempton was 4 to 1. Shadow Dance was 6 to 1. Money for that. There's money for Satin as well at uh, 10 to 1. But it was Al Sakib who got the better of Shadow Dance and Satin back in third place. This is a tremendous performance. And this Al Sakib, for my money, is a pattern race performer already. There's in the white colours, Al Sakib, the grey horse, the second shadow dance, and uh, David Egan, Satin from stall number six, finishes in third place. What we had here 
was a very good final time and a good final time because they go an even gallop. The best times, the track records and the best times you see come from even gallops, not overly strong gallops but just even ones and it means horses can go even 12 seconds and then post a very good time and Alsa Kib has done just that. Now we know it's an evenly run race because of the finishing speed percentage. Bang on 100, 100.75%. So they've gone dead even uh, throughout this race and it's turned into uh, a difficult race for horses like Humanity. He was coming off a steadily run contest at Kempton Park and quickened up well uh, to win there, but got completely found out here in a much more strongly run race against uh, better rivals. Now the first two are some way back at this stage. Al Sakib is just there and Shadow dances in there. So uh, they've sat away from what was an even gallop in the early part of the race and Al Sakib will then run on really strongly through the final three furlongs. 37.77, 37.88 uh, for the runner-up there. So just 0.11 uh, between them. And indeed the runner-up, the grey horse Shadow Dance, travelled like the best horse in the race, travelled up really strongly and is one for your racing TV tracker in a similar contest. But quite simply he's been beaten by a very progressive three-year-old in Al Sakib. This horse won off a mark of 87 at Ascot last time. Here is defied a nine pound rise to win this, winning off 96. And the triple digit speed figure that he has produced suggests to me that he's 110 horse all day long, Al Sakib. And there are more races to be won with him, you'd have thought, in 2024. Each of the final two furlongs were interesting. You can see them on the Racing TV website in the results section. Furlong 11, he went 12.23, and furlong 12, 13.25. Um, now, they don't seem like very quick sectionals at all, do they? They're not under 12 seconds like we've been looking at with, with the two-year-olds we've just seen. But this is a staying contest, run at a good gallop, and uh, those figures are, are better than anything else in the race uh, could produce. He has to knuckle down. Shadow Dance, who travelled strongly and was fastest in the 10th furlong, 12.28. So Shadow Dance is a horse of some some ability, just not good enough though to go with Al Sakib in the closing stages. They're very well strung out because not all of these off their marks are capable of running to the level that Al Sakib is. Shadow Dance unlucky to bump into such a progressive young stayer. And I think he'll be a stayer to conjure with next season for the Andrew Balding team. James Doyle was on board this time. Uh, he was quite effusive about this horse uh, when interviewed afterwards. And I think he's going to make up into a pattern level stay. He'll probably get a little bit more than a mile and a half. Humanity, who I really liked coming into this race on the back of what he did at Kempton in a fast time. Indeed, he featured on uh, the verdict a few weeks ago. He's got to go back to synthetics, I think. Look at him there, third last and laboring in the Qatar racing colours. Uh, there'll be more to come from him, but possibly back on the all weather. And he was wearing blinkers for the third time. The first two times he wore them, they worked the oracle with him. They really livened him up and maybe they just didn't work quite so well this time. And of course he was encountering ground with a little bit of cut in it, which is in contrast to uh, the poly track. But this horse you're looking at here, Al Sakibas, here at Newmarket on the Rolly Mile, put up a very good time performances. One of the best we've seen in a mile and a half handicap uh, this season. And that means for me that he's going to go on to Patton Company and he'll win Patton races. He's very good indeed. OK, let's turn our attentions to Saturday to Newmarket. It was uh, Cesaro which day, of course, and uh, we're going to have a look at the Dewhurst in a moment or two. So we're going to start with the, the Autumn Stakes. Here are all the winners uh, on the day. Those times were not too bad at all. I think uh, we were dealing with the good to soft ground and certainly no worse, really, looking at uh, those times. The City of Troy put up a very good performance, uh, just 1.95 uh, outside the standard. Highland Avenue, 1.35 outside. And a funny story put up a, a very good time as well. So we'll look at a couple of races. I wanted to put an Arabian crown in. I thought he was quite impressive in the, in the 3.15. But we'll go with Ancient Wisdom, who's from the same stable, uh, that of Charlie Appleby. And then, of course, we'll have a look at the Dewhurst and the uh, City of Troy demolition. This is the Autumn Stakes, then Group 3, 2 to 1, Ancient Wisdom. A mile was the trip. Arabic Legend was also 2 to 1, 7 to 2, and bigger the rest. And it was Ancient Wisdom. Who prevails from stall 1? Got the better of Chief Little Rock for the Edna O'Brien team and Ryan Moore from 5. An ambient friendly from stall number 2. Uh, finished back in third place. There's the winner over on the far side. Chief Little Rock setting out to, to make the running ambient friendly over with um, the winner on the far side. Um, 
Another evenly run race this, uh, they went a pretty good gallop, ambient friendly taking them along, along with uh, Chief Little Rock and just tracking the pace, uh, the winner, who's um, three from four in his uh, career now and um, he quickened up uh, pretty well. Look at that knee action that he's got, he really hits the ground very hard, so the little bit of juice that was uh, in the surface would definitely have suited him and uh, he displayed quite a, a decent turn of foot to win this. Um, evenly run, 100.38 the finishing speed percentage, so Ambient Friendly's got it spot on uh, from the front and it's going to take a horse with a turn of foot to win off that kind of pace. And that's what Ancient Wisdom did, for he quickened smartly in the seventh furlong. That's where he wins his race, 11.67, so the penultimate furlong he quickened. So just into the dip and up the other side is where he was able to quicken. And it's uh, visually uh, quite marked actually, because he's a length or so behind at this stage between the three and the two. It's the two to the one where he fires that 1167, and you'll see him fly past ambient friendly really, uh, and win pretty impressively. And uh, through that furlong, when he did that 1167, no other horse in the race could get under 12 seconds. So he was way better, here he goes. You can see without looking at the figures how impressively he quickened up there in the dip and he pulls right clear of Chief Little Rock, who's labouring in second place. Ambient Friendly's had enough now, having tried to make uh, every yard of the running. And this winner stays on very strongly. He was dominant in the final three furlongs overall. 36.58 he did, so even 12s really. And the runner-up was 37.47, so he's had a second quicker uh, through the final three furlongs than, than any of his rivals. You don't often see such a big discrepancy in the final three furlongs times that uh, course track produced. So uh, he's dominated this race for the last half of it and that furlong that he produced when nothing could go under 12 but he went 11.67 destroyed his field. What of his future? Well he's quite stoutly bred you know he's by Dubawi out of a Dalakani mare and there might be a bit more to come from him over further and therefore you have to think about the derby possibly for him. He might just be a, a derby horse. Uh, he's got quotes for the derby at this stage. I think he's about a, a 20 to 1 shot there or thereabouts uh, for the derby. But I think that's the route they go. I could see him being a, a Dante horse at York and then uh, take it from there really. But uh, the damn side of his pedigree is uh, loaded uh, with stamina and he might be a little bit of a rarity really. He's a horse who stays well but he's got a pretty potent turn of foot as identified by those uh, course track sectionals and that turn of foot completely destroyed his field and it was a good field uh, at that. I think uh, he's certainly a group one horse in the making. Okay, uh, time now to have a look at one of the best two-year-old performances we've seen for a number of years. Put up by City of Troy in the native trail at Dewhurst Stakes over seven furlongs. The going, of course, on the Saturday described as soft, but we've looked at the times already and it was a bit better than soft, I think. Eight to 15 was his price. It was five to one Iberian. Al Yanabi was six to one and it was 18 to one and bigger the rest. And City of Troy completely annihilates his field here in the Dewhurst quickly out of the stalls and Ryan Moore is able to dominate this race from the front to beat Al Yanabi who's prominent in second and Eben Shaddad over on the far side finished back in third but this race is all about City of Troy. Al Yanabi's just a little bit keen in the early part of the race I thought he ran really well in second place so given that he was using up plenty of petrol early on. The early gallop wasn't furious Ryan is dictating it his finishing speed percentage was interesting because I thought it'd be more of a, an even one, around about 100, but it was more than that. It was 105, just over 105, 105.53 to be precise, which means he's quickened up and he's come home 5.5% quicker than he ran the rest of the race. Function of two things that. One, Ryan saved a bit in front, but two, this horse has got a real good turn of foot and the further he went, the better he got. And he fired sub 12 second furlongs throughout, six of them in a row six sub 12s in a row out in front and we talked about the previous horse that we looked at uh, quickening up well that was ancient wisdom with an 1167 or well, this horse did an 11.2 in the sixth furlong he's doing it now between the two and the one 11.2 and doing that from the front when you've dictated nothing's going to run you down they're going to have to run 10 eights to even get to you and they're not capable of doing that he's got a fine turn of foot and look at his stride really stretching and grabbing the ground he's not got much a knee curl not like ancient wisdom who thumps the ground hard he skims the ground and he'll be even better when he gets better ground uh, to run on uh, he was the only horse to go under 12 seconds in the final furlong although ryan wasn't hard on him he went 11.99 
uh, through the final furlong, just eased down a little bit as well. And his final three furlongs are worth recording 34.46. The runner-up did 34.97. Uh, whatever way you look at it, whatever way you dice the numbers, for him to do six sub 12 second furlongs and throw in an 11.2 second penultimate furlong, what you've got is a horse of rare ability. I think the ground wasn't as bad as described and that suited him because there was a debate about whether they were going to run him or not. But they walked the course and they thought that they'd let him take his chance and he'd come to no harm even if he got beat. Indeed, his trainer... Aidan O'Brien said that it, defeat would not have been a problem, but he was absolutely delighted with this performance. And uh, well, they think they've got another Frankel on their hands, and they might well have. It's very hard to compare him with Frankel at this stage of his career. But what I would say is that he's not far off the standard that Frankel achieved as a two year old. It doesn't necessarily mean this horse will go on to be as good as Frankel was later on in his career. And I'll leave you with a comparison. A Dewhurst comparison on very similar ground. Frankel completed the seven furlongs of the Dewhurst in 1 minute 25.73. City of Troy, 1 minute 24.85. He was 0.88 seconds quicker than Frankel in the very same race. But they raced on different parts of the track. They were different sides of the track. Frankel raced stand side, City of Troy over on the far side um, and the ground might have been slightly different and wind conditions could have been different too. But that just gives an indication perhaps of what City of Troy has already achieved. He's a brilliant, brilliant two-year-old. Short price favourite uh, for the Guineas. He's pretty short for the Derby as well. He's been quoted for the Triple Crown as well. The world is his oyster. York's final couple of days this year were very valuable ones. The Coral Sprint was the feature event on uh, the Saturday. There was loads of prize money up for grabs on the Friday as well. And let's have a look at the winners on Saturday, though, because I'm going to concentrate on the Coral Sprint, won by Montesib for the Haggis team. The Times, uh, generally they were suggesting that the ground was as described. It was soft ground, uh, really. It was quite hard work for them uh, out there, as we'll see from the, the Montesib uh, race, but he put up a pretty good performance in terms of the clock with 114.07 over the six furlongs. This is how they bet. He was weak in the market, actually. Bit of a drifter. He went out to 10 to 1, having opened up at 17 to 2. But Wob 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 was favourite at 7 to 2. Air Gold Cup winners significantly 11 to 2. Albashir 15 to 2. Polo won 10s. Same for Montesid and 12s. Ali's Dancer and Pendleton. A very strong race. Loads of depth in this. Um, let's pick them up then. Montesid jumped out of stall number 7. Second horse uh, significantly came from stall number eight. And the third, Guido from 14. And the fourth, Hyper Focus, that came out of stall number four. First thing to note when they jump out is that there's a bit of a, a difference of opinion from round about stall 11, 12. Uh, they divide into two groups. Hyper Focus takes them along in the far group. In the stand side group, Guido takes them along. Now they finished third and fourth. I don't think we're dealing with a complete pace meltdown here, but we're dealing with a horse who got the trip better than most in the conditions. For here is Montesib out the back of the far side group. And I think the reason he drifted in the market is because normally at York over five and six furlongs, they blitz along in front and they don't come back. Remember the Nunthorpe uh, this year. Well, they do come back when the ground is soft and they go a good gallop and they did go strong early on. Second furlong, 11.38. There was no messing around here. No hanging around at all. I'll give you the first three furlongs. 11.83, 11.38 and 11.66. So they, they didn't hang around. They went a very strong gallop and they got a bit tired in front. And Montesib, who's effective at seven furlongs, comes through to pick them up under Kieran Fallon for William Haggis through there. And he wins going away. He's got no problem with seven furlongs, but six furlongs in a strongly run race with cutting the ground really suited him. He's got to significantly to chase down now. He's run very well, always prominent, and around another big race. But Montesib's able to reverse air gold cup form with that horse because of the gallop and because of conditions. He's a hold-up horse. He has to be held up. They've tried riding him prominently. Doesn't really work for him. He wants to be uh, dropped out. He's equally as effective at seven furlongs. And he did feature in the verdict uh, earlier this year, uh, Montesib. But uh, in big, big handicaps, he's just been found out a little bit. But this really suited him. Strong gallop 
and soft ground and I think he was seen to uh, best effect. I think he will be a pattern race performer. He won this off 101. I think if he gets these conditions um, over six furlongs, uh, then he could make up into a, a pattern race sprinter. On, on quick ground, quick summer ground over six, he probably finds it all happening a little bit too quick for him. Uh, but here, in a strongly run race, given a patient ride on ground that slowed his rivals down, that really seemed uh, to suit him. And he brought uh, the curtain down on the, the York season. It's been a, a fantastic one. Um, they had an Oaks winner win the Musidora, of course, and uh, Mostadaf won a, a tremendous Judmont International. So overall, they've had a, a super season. And this was the big prize on the Saturday, which went to William Haggis, who loves the winner at York, of course. It was a, a nice performance from a horse who's going places sprinting when he gets the right conditions. So that concludes the verdict uh, this week. I hope you've enjoyed uh, looking back on those six races, some uh, tremendous uh, performances, in particular uh, City of Troy. If I had a, a beast alert, I would have set it off. He's about even money for the 2,000 guineas. In my book, if he gets there in one piece, he's a threes on shot. I don't think there's anything that can bother him as long as he gets uh, decent ground. The best two-year-old we've seen for an awful long time. I hope you enjoyed reviewing what he did out there on the Rolly Mile and the other horses that we brought to you here on the verdict. Final verdict of the season next week when we'll be concentrating on the Kipco Champions Day at Ascot. I'll see you then.